Howdy. In this problem, we are given a graph of the velocity and the time. And it has uh, lots of squares. So it goes from negative six to six. So let's see. So maybe I can do, this will be minus five. Zero, five. Okay, and then for the time, we have 10 of them. So zero over here, five over here, and 10 over here. Okay, and they uh, just um, complete this graph with all the squares so that it's easy to count. Okay, and uh, it's the graph that represents the motion of a ball that rolls up a hill and then back again. So at zero seconds, it starts at six meters per second. And then at two seconds, it reaches uh, zero. So it stops over there. And then uh, this is a turning point. So the velocity becomes negative and it goes to negative six meters per second at 10 seconds. So kind of like that. And you know, just so that we can see it a little bit better I'm going to make this line a little thicker. This is the zero. Okay. So the question is, when does the ball return to the location it had at t equals zero? So if you plot the position as a function of time, uh, it's going to go uh, up, right? But the velocity is decreasing at each instant. And so initially it moves fast, but then it just goes to zero. And then at this point, the velocity becomes negative. So the position is going to start going in the negative direction. Uh, initially slowly, but then faster, you know, ac accelerating, but at a lower pace than when it was going up. So maybe it's going to look kind of like this, right? So this is the position versus versus um, versus time, and you know eventually it will actually uh, continue going down into the negative direction over here. What we are being to ask, what, what, what we are asked to do is to calculate at what time this happens. So the position, the displacement that it had over here in this section is the same as the displacement that it's gonna have somewhere over here. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned in class, this is just about counting. So let's count. Uh, this is a triangle. So 
uh, the displacement is the area under the curve. of a velocity versus time plot. Right, so here we have the, the, the width of this triangle is two seconds. And the height is six meters per second. So the seconds go away and this is uh, 12 meters. Uh, but this is a triangle, so we have to divide by two. So six meters, right? That was the, the displacement um, in the first two seconds. So here is six meters, and it will be here, and you have two seconds. So now we, uh, we know the, uh, we, we can calculate here the width and the height, right? So if you count over here, you're going to see six squares. So we can, in this simple case, we can actually just do it by trial and error. So If we take, for example, the first one, two, three, four seconds uh, after the turning point, so one, two, three, four seconds, um, the width of this triangle is four seconds, and the height is one, two, three, negative three. Uh, meters per second. So the area under the curve is four seconds times negative three meters per second. The seconds go away. And this is minus 12 meters. And we have to divide everything by two because this is a triangle. So the area over here is negative six meters. Okay, so we'll take it another four seconds. So it will be at five seconds uh, when it reaches zero again. And that is the answer for, for this problem. There is another way to do it. Uh, this is with, with calculus. Uh, for such a simple case, you know, it's kind of an overkill, but is the more general way in which you should do things. So if you, um, if you're not interested in the calculus, then you can stop watching, but I'm gonna do this with calculus also. So first we need to find the, the equations uh, of the line, they are straight lines, so they follow this form. All right, so the slope over here, uh, run, which is, uh, sorry, rise, which is uh, negative six meters per second, divided by the run, which is two seconds. So this is minus three meters per second squared. That is the, uh, that is the slope. And the B, it's, well, it's easy to see it here, it's just plus six. So uh, let's call this one V1. So V1 is negative three meters per second squared times T plus six meters per second. 
you have a time over here, so the units here are going to be meters per second over here also, and that's good because this is a velocity. You know, just to make it um, a little simpler to write, let's forget about the units. Well, let's not forget about the units, but let's just keep them in our head. Okay. And then this one, uh, the slope, you can calculate it is negative six. meters per second, so from here to here in eight seconds. So that is gonna be, I guess, uh, three quarters meter per second squared, that's the slope. But, you know, let's forget about the units. Sorry, not forget. So this is going to be negative three fourths of t. And then, well, if if it goes um, three quarters of a meter per second per second, then in two seconds, you're gonna have twice that. So it's gonna be six uh, fourths. So this is three halves, right? So it's going to intersect the y-axis at 1.5 which is three, three halves. And that is also positive. Okay, so we have the two equations. And we know that velocity is dx dt. So dx is v dt and what we want is uh, the whole displacement so we want the integral and the integral here also right and we have the the two velocities so how do we write that well we want The whole displacement, this will be, um, well, from some number here to some number here, it's gonna be zero. That's we are, it's what we are given by the problem. And on this side, we have the velocity. So we're gonna have V1 dt. This is the first segment. So it goes from zero to two plus V2 dt. And this is gonna go from two to t prime. And this t prime is what we want. So what t prime uh, will give you that this sum is equal to zero. Well, um, now we can put the v1 in here, so it's going to be integral from 0 to 2, negative 3 t dt plus integral from 0 to 2, 6 uh, dt. And you know, 6 and 3 are constants, so we can take them out of the integral.
And then we're going to have this one. So it's going to be minus three fourths integral from zero, not from two to t prime, what we're trying to find. Uh, t dt. And plus three halves integral from two to t prime dt. And we want these to be equal to zero. So all of these integrals are fairly uh, easy, fairly standard. So this is going to be minus 3 t squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. This is going to be plus 6 t evaluated from 0 to 2. This one is minus 3 fourths times 1 half evaluated from 2 to t prime. And this one plus 3 halves. Oh, sorry, this is 1 half of t squared. So I'm going to put it over here. 3 halves t evaluated from 2 to t prime equals 0. OK, so um, the zeros, you know, they're just going to be 0, so we don't have to worry about them. We do have to worry about the 2. So it's going to be minus 3 times 2 squared divided by 2 plus 6 times 2 minus, this is going to be 3 over 8. Um, t prime squared minus so this minus accepts uh, affects the whole thing, right? So we have to put it in parentheses. Minus uh, three eighths of two squared. Then this one is just positive, but I'm going to put it in parentheses as well. It will be three halves of t prime minus three halves of two equals zero. Okay, so we can continue. At this point, it's just algebra. Uh, this is not fourth, this is squared. Um, OK, so this one is 3 times 4 divided by 2. So we can get rid of this one, so 2. So this is 6, so minus 6 uh, plus 12 minus 3 eighths of t prime squared. And this one is 3 times 4 divided by 8. So 3 halves. Minus and minus plus 3 halves. Plus 3 halves t prime. Minus these two go away, minus three. Equals zero. So we can put um, the terms together. Uh, since we don't have any other t's, we can um, remove the primes in there. This is just and we want to put it in a way that is uh, easy to 
understand. So negative three eighths of t squared. And then uh, plus three halves of t. And then plus nine halves. So if you add this one and this one and this one and this one, right? So nine halves, um, that is equal to zero. Um, and if we want to make it even a little bit better then we can multiply everything times eight, zero times eight is still equal to zero, but here we will have minus three t squared, and then that one will be um, three times four, 12 t, and that one is gonna be nine times four, 36 equal to zero. Okay, so this is our uh, close to final equation. And you know how to get the roots of a quadratic equation. There's many ways, but the most general way is with, the, um, with this equation. Let me use a different color. It's a little, yeah, that's better, easier to see. Like this, right? And so A, we can see here that uh, A is equal to negative three, B is equal to 12, and C is equal to 36. So T1, the first root, is gonna be minus 12, plus or minus square root of 144, 12 squared, uh, yeah, 12 squared, minus four times negative three times 36. Divided by two times negative three. Okay, so this one is four hundred and thirty two. Uh, positive, 432 and 144 is 576. And the square root of 576 is 24. All right, so um, this is just a general one. And this one is negative six. Okay, so now T1 is minus 12 plus 24 divided by negative six. So this is minus 12 divided by um, negative six that is equal to two seconds. And 
And the second root is minus 12 minus 24 divided by negative six. So this is minus 36 divided by negative six. So this is six seconds. So, you know, if you look at the graph again, um, it reaches, um, um, wait, never mind. Have to think about the, the two seconds, but these six seconds, the, the second root is the answer that we got Mm. Oh, I see. This one is plus 12. This one is minus two. Yeah, this is not the solution that we want. This is before we started counting. This is the solution that we want, the six seconds. But, you know, we obtain it significantly in a significantly easier way by, by just counting uh, the rectangles and getting the area of the triangles but you can do it in a more rigorous way as well. So yes, the answer is six seconds. Cool, I hope you like the problem.